for anyone that has not been to the improv shop before. Yeah. All right, great. Wonderful. Thank you very much for coming out. Uh, you are uh, at the improv shop on a Monday at 8 p.m. That means it, it, it means it's the lab. The lab. It's the spirit. Yes. Yeah. The lab is a, uh, is a night of experimental long-form improvisation. Uh, it's one of our very first shows that we started way back in 2010, and it's recently been brought back on Monday evenings. Uh, it works like this. Every set you're going to see tonight is going to be completely 100% improvised right here on stage. Um, the closing piece of the lab is a piece we like to call the Serendipitous Pastiche, which is a combination of current improv shop veterans and literally anybody that is sitting in this house that wants to sign up for opportunities to be called up on stage. So if you are watching the first two teams and you're like, I want to try that, you totally can. We have a sign-up sheet over with Eliza over there by the door. You can write your name down for an opportunity to be randomly called up on the stage to improvise with our improv shop veterans. That's the serendipitous pastiche. We do have two teams before that. We're going to take an intermission between each set this evening, about five to ten minutes for each intermission. Um, our second team of the evening is a solo show called Pastel Dad. We do have, uh, if, you are, uh, if you are thirsty during the show, we do have a water jug at the back of the house. Uh, feel free at any point to get up, rise from your seat, you can go to the bar, do whatever you need to do. We won't mind you. Um, but let's go ahead and get the show started. They're going to come to you at the top for one suggestion, then they're going to improvise their hearts out. Please welcome them to the stage, friends. It's Infinite Staircase! Tell you, Dave. I, I know I'm 
If you don't completely cure them, they have to come back. I this is a business. I know, this is a business. I'm just, I was having their IDs. I wasn't giving them the right medicine. I don't know, we just got better. He was my prize patient, chronically ill. He had to come back every third Wednesday. I know Dr. Sanders, I... We really messed up on this one. We're gonna, we might go under now. He was the only thing keeping this office afloat. I just, I, I don't know what to say. I, I feel like I tried my best not to make him better. <laughs> like, I, I adored everything I learned in nursing school, and, you know, Dr. Steele, I just, I don't know, I failed you, and, you know, I just, I, I just feel really bad. You should. Huh? Got some fentanyl here. I know, I know. This is what you were supposed to give Charlie. He was gonna take this and not be improved. We both know he had a UTI and needed antibiotics. I was gonna give him pain medicine. Yeah, I was gonna give him a I don't know what happened. Is something going on with you? Is, is something going on? Is something going on? You're being forgetful. Yeah, I just... I don't, I don't even know. I... You even hear me? I don't know. You made sure the machines were working, Dave. The machines are not supposed to work. I know, you. I plugged it in. What? It just seemed like it needed to be plugged in. I don't know. We have a paper that is taped to, to the screen yeah. that says you, you are sick. I started singing and maybe it was my singing that made her better. It just, I don't know, I just, you know, I came to work for you because you're the worst doctor and you make the most money and it's, <laughs> yeah, I fixed them a little bit. I know, and then they keep going back. It's like a subscription service. Oh, Dr. Stevens, there's a patient in the ER. He says he has hemorrhoids. I think this might be a two-monther. You sure? Oh! Hey, uh, I brought the turf 
Now you can see your turf that we're going to have uh, yeah. to be for you. Yeah. Say hello, old Betsy. Yeah, you're not getting better. What's the key? 
I know I'm not supposed to, but I do check the monitors when you leave.
<laughs> I just, you know, where you plan on going, the fish are at least three times the size of the boat. How are you going to carry any? You can't survive like that. Yeah, you catch some marlin. <laughs> your sister. You replace your sister with a marlin. She is worthless. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I'm going to miss you. I'm, I'm, you're going to be gone a while. This is like a crucial part of my life. I'm about to go off to college. I need my dad around. College will only get you so far, Jeremy. Come to a point where you realize that you don't really know why you got into what you got into for any reason. People you love or just the faceless friends. <laughs> I feel like that's, I'm not the person you should say that to. And I saw it, I love it. But I'm a faceless drum. Life can get you. you know? <laughs> so I'm a faceless drum. I, I'm going to be going for a little bit. Not very long. Just until I learn the trick of the trade to get back to helping you and love. You cut to three years later. <laughs>
Jesus, you're fine. You're all right.